Cheryl Lazar, and you're watching WebBeat TV. So first of all, Shira, thank you so much for talking with me. I'm so excited to be Skyping with you. Oh, I'm so excited to be talking to you too. It's always great to spread the word. You know, I always, I mean, I know you from, obviously from what's trending, from on the scene, um, from this week in YouTube. And yes. so, you know, you're really a person I look up to, so it's great to, to be talking oh, to you live. Oh, you're a sweetheart. No, I appreciate that. I just think it's great, you know, to see people like you doing your thing and just making it happen. It's really cool. So let's talk a little bit about what's trending because you just launched it this week and it's a, yes. a show about pretty much about web trends, about what is hot on the web, on Twitter and Facebook, what people are talking about, right? Yeah, it's the topic stories, people that are shaping our conversation online. I just found that, you know, a ton of us are online. Obviously, this isn't a new, I mean, it is a revolution, but it's not like it's that new or this is the reality this is the future and not all of us just talk about you know politics or just hard news and then just entertainment news i really do believe looking at all of our streams on all of our networks a lot of us are interested in a lot of different things and typically you know a lot of us share similar links and interests and so but there's no show that's covering all that stuff i really found there was a gap in programming we have cable broadcast shows and then we have web video, video blog web shows, which I've done my whole career, but there was a gap in terms of a very high quality show, but that had the authenticity and interactivity of the web and really had the tone of voice of the web and, and was, you know, with someone and with the people that have been in the trenches of the community. Yeah, now what I would like to know is, because it's a one once a week show, are you planning on um, expanding it or um, how are you going to cover all the trends yeah. that are going on in a weekly show. Of course, I mean, trends and stories, as we know, like everything happens very quickly right. in our digitally connected lives. Um, there is news breaking at every moment, memes, viral stories, and that's why we had, have a blog. We have an online destination, bsnews.com slash what's trending, where we create, you know, eight pieces of original to today. Some original video and we keep people informed through the blog and of course through the, our Twitter so we keep people coming back for more of course you know we have our weekly live show which you know allowed us to really put the energy in and create something that was high quality once a week we didn't really have the ability to do that on a daily basis right now definitely there's room to expand I mean I think this is just the beginning we're at this point just trying to prove a model and prove that this works and that people want this and it is the time for this and then you know it's completely open to opportunity and growth there's been no show really that has become a staple show for this generation and we really hope that this becomes that Yes, I think you're absolutely right because there is no show that actually covers all of that. I think many traditional media outlets, outlets that's exactly what they're struggling with because there is so much going on yeah. and it's happening live. So how do you, you know, translate that into a very high quality program? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, listen, the fact is you're, it's not about necessarily the scoop or there's always going to be things happening before you get to it. It's about creating interesting conversation around it and finding that nugget, that different angle um, that people aren't really catching on to. You know, we share things in 140 characters and links, but how can you really create context around those stories and, and to show people the stories that they really need to know amidst all the other noise? And so we look at us as we're those curators. So if you don't have time to go through all that stuff, you come to our site, you come to the show and you'll leave informed, entertained, and ready to, you know, show your friends what you really know. And you'll leave feeling like you're part of a really interesting experience and that you are listened to. Well, and that's another kind of web trend uh, that I saw in the past, I mean, couple of months. Um, I don't, you, you've probably seen it as well, that a lot of different websites personalize things nowadays. It's, you know, Google search results, Bing now as well, uh, with yeah. integrating the Facebook uh, like button. Um, if you go on Facebook, your newsfeed is being personalized. Everything is personalized for your user experience. So some people are now asking, is that really a good 
um, direction to be heading because are we really are we showing people things that they want to see or what they need to oh, see? Okay. Oh, no, that's a huge issue right now. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. When we were getting all this information and it wasn't being personalized, you're saying, well, I don't get it. Why can't you figure out what I want? I want to be able to choose those things. And we loved customization. When finally those features came out on every single site, we were like, oh my God, we jumped at it. And then on the other hand, now we're going back, we're like, wait a second, it's too much customization. So yeah. I think we're always going to be going up, up back and forth with these things, wanting more, and then when it comes, wanting less of it. And privacy and connectivity is a big part of that. And mm-hmm. that's why, you know, um, Eli Pariser, I think that's how you pronounce it, has this new book called The Filter Bubble, which is really fascinating. Yes, exactly. Saying how at this point, you know, the, every site, because they track us so much, they know exactly what they want and how we want it, that almost as much as the internet is so open, and that's why it's, it's such a democratizing space, that it's at the same time giving us the information that it knows we want. So in the end, we won't be able to stumble on things and discover things. It won't be like opening up a newspaper where you might just go to your section, but Mm -hmm. through going to that sports section, you might stumble on an international news story. News is gonna get to the point online where it will literally just know what you wanna read and watch so it can get those views and you won't see anything beyond that. And that's definitely a scary thing. It is. And I actually, I saw that video um, of Eli. I didn't read his book, but I did see a video of him on TED Talks. And it's fascinating. I actually have it on uh, our website as well on WebB TV. So uh, yeah, you should definitely check it out because it's, it's fascinating. His view on it, I'd never thought of it that way. Um, That if, you know, if you type in Egypt and two different people type in Egypt and they both have completely different results depending on their previous search behavior. So, um, yeah, some people say that's good. Others say, you know, it also has some bad sides. So, I don't know. But I just wanted to, you know, know your opinion on that a little bit, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I, yeah, I, I just think that the internet can be a, a place of so much freedom. But in a world where we can be tracked and advertisers want to target us in many ways, and it's easy to do that, it does definitely leave it um, to being possibly more of a bubble Anything. Okay, well, um, I think I think that's it for uh, for this interview. Thank you so much for talking awesome. with me. Congratulations on what's trending, and uh, where can people find you? Where can people watch what's trending? Well, just go to cbsnews.com/what's trending. We're on Twitter at what's trending. You can find me on Twitter at Shira Lazar. And, you know, we're constantly updating with content. We're constantly, you know, wanting to hear from everyone out there what stories that they're reading, uh, what videos they're watching, what people we should be talking to. Because we really look at ourselves as bringing people access to the stories that they're reading a bit about, but they want to know more about. So it's really fun. And I'm happy that you reached out. So thanks for having me on. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for being here. And the last thing I would like for you to do, if you want, is help me say goodbye in Dutch. So uh, I'm from the Netherlands and I usually stop or end the show with doei, which means goodbye. So if you could say that, uh, you would make me very happy. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for having me on. And doei, everyone. Yay, doei. Thank you. (laughs)